you're watching Greater Brockton, Mark Linda, your host, and in the month of late August, early September, we have candidates on Greater Brockton. We usually highlight and promote nonprofits, but we thought it was important to bring the information to you, the voter. So today we have in studio a new face on TV. We have Felicia Chalmers, who is running for Ward 6 School Committee. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to meet you. I, nice to meet you Like as I well. said, I know I've seen you before. I, some of you <laughs> folks that are with you I've seen many a time. Okay. Um, tell us about yourself. Tell us who you are, why you're running, what brought you into the race in Ward 6. Because um, I believe the candidate, who the, the office holder who's there, um, was unopposed the last election. Mm -hmm. So this time she's opposed. Mm -hmm. Why are you running? Okay. Well, my name is Felicia Chalmers. I have um, three children in the Brockton Public School System, as well as a granddaughter. Mm -hmm. uh, I've decided to run because I am concerned with all the budget cuts that are going on. I want to make sure that my children, along with all the other children in Brockton, have a great education so that when they go out into the world, they're able to compete with everyone else. Brockton has always had an excellent educational system. I'm very proud that I graduated from Brockton Public Schools. My mother was a teacher in the Brockton Public Schools, and we're well known. Mm -hmm. we face our challenges. We've had a charter school hit the city, take a lot of money out. Mm -hmm. Where are your children and your grandchildren in the system? What, what, what schools? My granddaughter's in Downey. Mm -hmm. And my three children, um, they have developmental disabilities. They are at the high school. Okay, Brockton High, which yes. is a great place. I can't, I, I, I can't say enough about it. They had they a TV wonderful. studio there back in the day, and that's how I ended up in TV. Oh, wonderful. I hung out there a little too much, sometimes at the expense of classes, but <laughs> that's another story. So um, the budget cuts were drastic this year. There were, yes. I think it was 159 teachers pink slipped. Yes. Uh, about 50 plus of them have been brought back, but yes. that means there's about 100 that weren't. Right. So that, that obviously concerns you. Yes. What are you hearing when you're out talking to the voters? I'm assuming you're going out and meeting and greeting and asking people maybe to put up a sign or take a bumper sticker or something like that. So it, what got you into the race is you were concerned. Yes. Okay. Um, what I've heard from people, they're, they're like me, they're concerned about what's happening. Um, they want to make sure that uh, the budget cuts won't um, be so harmful to the point where the children aren't getting the education that they need. Of course, classes, they're going to have to have, with teacher layoffs, they're going to have more children in classrooms. Mm -hmm. um, there are going to be some programs that are going to be cut, of course. Um, so everyone is concerned. They want to make sure that uh, our children are getting the best education because Brockton has always, like you said, Brockton is wonderful and our teachers are wonderful and they've always given our children a great education. So we just want to make sure that that continues. Now, mother and grandmother are certainly good qualifications to be elected yes. to the school committee. What's your background? Uh, do you, uh, I mean, do you have a specialty at work? What, what makes you, let's say, a better candidate than the person that has the job right now? Okay. Well, I can only say what would make me a good candidate, I, what I feel would make me a good candidate. Mm -hmm. um, I have been a foster parent for over 14 years. Uh, I've worked with children that have come into my home. I do intensive foster care. So when they come into my home, they have medical um, issues, they have developmental disabilities and even behavioral issues. I've also worked for over 20 years um, as a, uh, a supervisor for adults um, with special needs. Okay. I've worked in residentials, uh, residential schools and um, in day programs and things of that nature. Okay. So I really have a passion for working with children. Special ed, being a school committee member myself, a Southeastern, special ed is more and more and bigger and bigger part of the budget because there's so many different types of special needs. Mm -hmm. Back in my day, I mean, I just turned 56, so back in my day, there wasn't as much special ed. Mm -hmm. Now it seems like almost anything is special ed, and Brockton has never shied away from that. The Brockton school system has always been kind of a champion for special mm -hmm. ed, so that would be a specialty that you would bring to the table in, in turn. So who are you getting your encouragement? What, what prompted you to run? The concern? Did you have people talking to you saying, look, this would be good for you, we know you, you, you brought a couple of your friends here today, were you encouraged 
by people? I've been encouraged. I've been encouraged by my friends that came with me. I've been encouraged by my pastor, but more so, um, I'm a parent who attends school committee meetings. Mm -hmm. I attend IEPs. Yeah. Um, I'm at the parent-teacher conferences. So, and I've had a great opportunity in, uh, and chances to work with a lot of different teachers. So as, as a parent who has to advocate for services for her children, when all of this came up, you know, I started thinking, you know, about all the things that I had gone through and conversations that I've had when I've been in CPAC meetings. Um, and I started thinking, you know, I can complain or I can do something. Yeah. And I decided that I should run. Okay, so out in the ward, what are people talking to you about in Ward 6? You have Asheville and Brookfield right in the ward. Yes. And then... The kids that go to middle school go to a variety of schools because we have yes. the north-south zone and of course everybody goes to one Brockton High. So yes. what are you hearing from people when you're either knocking on a door or going to a CPAC meeting or something like that? What are people saying to you? The first thing that they've asked me is, why should I vote for you? Okay. So I have a conversation with them. I talk to them about um, you know, my concerns. I talk to them about um, you know, things I've experienced as a parent. I can I can only come from that angle. Mm -hmm. There is no other angle that I can come. And their parents as well, and grandparents like I am. So they are, are concerned about. We all have the same concerns. So we just want, like I said, I want to continue to um, work with the schools, like I've done, been doing. But I want to do it in a capacity where I'm a part of the body that is governing what is happening in our schools. I think that as a parent, I can bring something to the table. Now. Going to the school community meetings is important. Yes. I've watched a lot of election cycles. I've been here for 23 years, but I've worked in cable for 33, mm -hmm. some of it in Brockton, some of it elsewhere. That might be a rarity because some of the people running in this election cycle, not in your ward, don't go to the school committee meetings. There's people running for city council that don't go to the city council meetings. Mm -hmm. Now, you can watch them on TV. We broadcast <laughs> the meetings. The council is live. The school committee is recorded. But I think that's important to actually go and be a part of it to see what they're talking about, especially I, during the tough times when it's budget cutting time. Exactly. Um, I think more people should attend public meetings. That's just my own, that's my little soapbox for the day, I guess. <laughs> so um, is there anything you want to focus on if you're successful and you get elected? Any specific issue, either at one of the schools? Is it, is it, is it class size? Is, I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth. What issue? I, you're probably not a one-issue candidate, but what issues might you want to contribute if you get elected? I would actually, what I would like to do is I would like to um, encourage more parent um, and community involvement in our school systems. We need that. We need to see more parents come to the school committee meetings. Mm -hmm. We need to see um, more parents, uh, you know, uh, get together and help to act, help teach each other how to advocate for our children. So I would like to encourage uh, more. I would like to see uh, uh, our um, councilman has ward meetings, yeah. and I would like to see um, a combined ward meeting along with a school committee person that is in our ward come and talk to us and tell us what is going on, what is happening, so that we're up on um, you know whatever uh, cuts are or you know. Um, maybe, um, excuse me, um, maybe uh, something has changed, maybe uh, something has gotten better. So I would like to know that, and I would love to, for our school committee person to come out and just talk to us. So I live know. in Ward 1. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen in Ward 6 now? You, you don't have your counselor and your school committee person at a meeting, at a ward meeting? Is it just the counselor? Well, the, the ones that I've attended, I've only seen the counselor. Okay. I cannot say um, whether, but the ones that I have attended, and I've attended several, okay. I've only seen him. We covered one of his meetings. He did one on the sports complex mm -hmm. that's going into Ward 6. Mm -hmm. um, how do people feel about the whole neighborhood school concept? The Ashfield School a number of times has been on the chopping block. Let's let's close it. We, we need to do budget cuts. Let's close it. Mm -hmm. If you got elected, would you fight to keep both of those schools open? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. My daughter um, attended the Asheville. And um, she they wanted her to attend East, but Asheville actually had a program because she has special needs. The program at Asheville was a much better fit for her. And I must say she excelled there. 
And so for me, that school is important. And, and I believe that it would be for other parents as well. My daughter um, was struggling with some things and they brought out the better side of her. They brought out a side of her that she didn't know existed. She more, was more confident. Mm -hmm. um, she started, uh, she was very shy. And um, she started helping other students with their work. So I think that the program at the Asheville is wonderful and I would do all I can to see that stay open. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you your time. You can, okay. A minute or two, whatever you feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Don't feel pressured for two. Forget I'm here. Look at that camera, talk to the voters, tell them how they can contact you as well and find out information about you and help you and why you should be elected. Okay. Well, like you, I'm a concerned parent. I'm concerned, uh, I'm invested in the city, I'm a homeowner here, I'm a taxpayer. I have children in the school system and I love Brockton. And our teachers are hardworking, they are wonderful staff. And I want to make sure that our children continue to get the best education that they can get. I feel that parental input is important, and that is why I am running for school committee. Also, if you'd like to contact me, you can contact me at Felicia Chalmers, F-E-L-I-C-I-A-C-H-A-L-M-E-R-S at hotmail.com, and I will respond. And if you'd like to have a sign or donate to my cam campaign, please contact me, and I will definitely get back to you. Felicia, one last thing. Phone number, if you want people oh, to get to absolutely. it. Absolutely. We'll post it on the screen. Absolutely. My cell phone number is 774-840-0390. It's nice to meet you in it's person. It's nice to meet you as and, well. And uh, putting your name on the ballot, always courageous. I've done it a number of times. <laughs> sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Yeah. But most of all, it's nice to see people involved in the community. Yes, so it we'll, is. So we'll have you back and we'll follow the whole campaign. Thank you for having me. Glad to. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more candidates and election coverage in this fall, both the preliminary election in September and the final election in November. Most of all, do your civic duty and go out and vote. Thanks for joining us.